I'm a firm believer that everyone should buy themselves a birthday present every year because who knows yourself better than you? And it should be something fun and it should be something that is pretty special to you and almost always something that kind of harkens back to your childhood. So this year for the big 49, I bought myself an Instapot. And it is not just an ordinary Instant Pot, as you can see. This is an R2D2 Instant Pot. Let that sink in. I'm about to have R2D2 in my kitchen full time, all the time. Oh, I just love it. So I am familiar with Instant Pot cooking. I really like it. I just could never justify having an appliance of this size in my kitchen. As you know, my kitchen is pretty small, but when I saw this guy, I could not resist and he came home with me for sure. So I picked him up at Home Goods for about 80 bucks. This is a six quart Instant Pot. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbox and then we will put this Instant Pot to the test. I'm gonna cook up some vegan staples, the chickpea. All right. Oh, welcome to the galaxy. I'm gonna have to get some shots of this. As soon as you open it, there's like a little picture of R2D2 and it says, welcome to the galaxy. That's really cute. It also has a little thing that says what's included, which it looks like it's just a steamer rack and like a guidebook, um, plus all the little different elements of the instant pot. So, oh, and then another, I'm going to get shots of this, I promise, and I'll put it in here. Um, welcome to the rebellion. A nice little boy. They, they branded this well. The one thing I really hope it does is I hope that it makes R2-D2 noises. I mean, that would make it perfect, right? Um, Instant Pot usually just has a series of beeps, um, that kind of thing. All right, a little manual. Oh shoot, is this upside down? No. Oh, okay, sorry. I was like, oh my gosh, is that the bottom of it? But no, it's just part of the, the uh, packaging. Little power cord, no big deal. Let's take this out. So this is, oh. This is the whole thing. All right, there we go. Oh my gosh, how awesome is that? Okay, there's nothing else in there. So this is a pretty simple appliance, but here it is. I mean, look at this. So I love that the top is this gray, which normal Instapots, they're just black. And then of course it's got all the little R2D2 Pro little appliques on the side, goes all the way around. I mean, that is super cute. Let me see if I can. There we go. Opens pretty easily. Instant Pots are really easy to cook with. I, I think a lot of people are intimidated. I know I was intimidated when I first started cooking in one, but they're really simple. I mean, it's a, it's the modern day pressure cooker. And if you ever talk to your people my age, if you talk to your mom, usually their parents, your grandparents cooked in pressure cookers and loved them, but they were supposedly kind of dangerous. So there's the little steamer rack that goes inside. I think you could cook like cakes and stuff like that in there with this steamer rack. And then here is the insert, which is pretty nice and standard. There we go. All of that has little recycle symbols on it. So that will be going into the recycle bin. And that's it. I mean, this is the Instant Pot. I mean, it's not that, oh wait, what's that? This is something I'm not familiar with. It's got a little valve. I think that might be for overflow that it just kind of popped off. Um, but you see, it's pretty simple contraption. I say that now, watch me not be able to get it back on. There we go, locked and loaded. So there it is, it's pretty simple. What I'm gonna do now, I wish there was more to show you, but there just isn't. So I will take this over to my kitchen now and we will cook up some beans. And also I'll get a nice tight shot of exactly what this thing looks like so that you can see it a little bit better. But clearly I'm in love. Check him out in the kitchen, isn't he beautiful? I mean, I just can't get over the R2-D2 blues. They're even all the way up here on the handle. <sighs> just looks so nice. So you can see up here, it's got all the normal functions of an Instant Pot. That is the release valve for the steam. And like I said earlier, the, va the appliques, the decoration of R2-D2 goes all the way around him. It's 360. So here's the display module. You can see it has all the typical things that you would see on a Instant Pot display. I have just been doing a little bit of reading and I was going to use the bean function on here to make my chickpeas, but it said if your beans are soaked, it only takes 
five minutes. So that sounds amazing. So now here's the test. I am going to actually plug this in. I am hoping that it makes the R2D2 noise. Should I hit something and see if it does? Or maybe if I take off the top. Oh no, that's just the normal, I hope you could hear that. That's just the normal Instant Pot. Oh well, I kind of figured it wouldn't have the R2D2 sound effects because if it did, that would be on the box. Oh well, something for them to note for future versions of this machine. Okay, so I promised I wanted to check this thing out and see how it works. I am going to now make some chickpeas in the Instant Pot. I start out with a pound of dried garbanzo beans or dried chickpeas and I pour the bag out onto a cookie sheet like you probably saw in the video. Now I do that because I've always been told that some of these bags of beans could contain things like rocks or dirt and this is your opportunity to kind of pick through there. I've been cooking from dried beans and that is usually the way I make my beans. I cook from dried. And for 30 years that I've been cooking them, I have never found a rock or dirt. Now I have found other types of beans. I've even found like kernels of corn, but I've never found anything weird. But that's part of the process that we're supposed to do. So I always do lay them out on a cookie sheet, thumb through them to make sure there's nothing weird in there. In there. And then I put them into a colander and I rinse them nice and clean. So the next step there are, a couple, there are two lanes of thought for this. Um, you're either a soaker or you're not. I am actually a soaker and I'm a salter. I'm actually a super soaker and I'll explain that in a second. But what I do is to the pound of dried beans, I add about six to eight cups of water. Can you hear my beans right now? They are popping. I hope, they, I hope you can pick that up on the, on the uh, microphone. That's crazy. It's because I've already rinsed them and everything, but anyways, they're popping. It's kind of crazy. So. I brine the water first, actually six to eight cups of water and I add one teaspoon of salt, mix it around and then I add the dried beans to that. I do this for a couple of reasons. First of all, the salt I think makes them taste a little bit better. Um, the reason I soak them is because I believe that that does help with digestion the toot factor. And actually, I'm a super soaker. I have never soaked my beans for less than 10 hours. You're supposed to do about eight hours. I go 10, 12, sometimes 15. I have soaked my beans for 24 hours one time just by accident, and they turned out just fine. I don't think you need to do that, but I was just letting you know that that is a possibility. Um, so usually 10 to 12, 15 hours in that salted brine really makes for a nice tender bean once you cook it. So then you drain that water after about 15 hours. And the reason you drain it, some people say, oh, but why would you drain it? Because you've got that bean water tastes like beans and it's got the salt in it. Why not just throw it in the Instant Pot at that point? Well, I do believe I'm of the school of thought that some of the things that and to that toot factor are leached out into that water. So I just take that water out, I rinse the beans again, and then we're going to use fresh water. So this is where we are right now. This is the process after 15 hours. I know that sounds like a lot, but those steps are super easy. And I do think it makes for a really good start to cooking them in your Instapot because supposedly it's only gonna take about five minutes in this Instapot. I washed out the liner of my Instapot and then I added my chickpeas and now I'm going to add, let's see if I can do this out of this bowl gracefully, six cups of fresh water. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, that's good. And that's kind of how I like to see it. I like for the water to come just above the chickpeas, so that's actually perfect. Now I'm going to add another teaspoon of salt to this water and I'm going to add one bay leaf. Actually. I might add two bay leaves, to be honest with you. There we go. And then I'm gonna add just a dash of olive oil. Supposedly that helps with a little bit of the foaming that happens with um, beans. And then we are ready to cook these things. I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Pop, pop. Boom, let's go. 
I hope you can see the display okay. It does say off right now, but what we're gonna do is we are going to hit pressure cook and I'm gonna take the time down to five minutes because that's what Instapot says how long it takes to cook dried garbanzo beans. America's Test Kitchen says six minutes, but we'll go with that. And then it's, um, right now it's on high pressure. If you hit the pressure button, you can see low and then to high. The actual manual says to use high. America's Test Kitchen says low, but we're gonna do high pressure, five minutes, and then I'm gonna hit Pressure cook, oh, it just clicked on, so there you go. It is on. So what I'll do now is I will time this to see how long it takes for it to come up to pressure. The actual cooking time is five minutes, but it could take five or six, seven minutes for it to actually come up to pressure. Still, total runtime is about 10 to 12 minutes. That's pretty good. I turned off my light so you could see this a little bit better, but what's happened, it took actually about 14 minutes for it to come up to pressure. And once it does come up to pressure, it starts that five minute cooking time clock and you can see it just clicked back to four. So it'll count down to the cooking time. So I set five minutes, it's gonna count down all the way to zero. And then when it hits zero, you're gonna probably wanna let it like just sit there for a little bit and let it chill. Um, but it does say that it depends, the amount of time that it takes to bring something up to pressure depends on the amount of food in the Instapot. So I guess we have over a pound of beans in there. So that, I guess that's why it took 14 minutes. I thought it was gonna take like five, but it was more like 14. We just hit zero, so now it is time to release the pressure. You can just let it sit in there for a while if you wanted, but I am eager to see what's going on. So I'm gonna use a wooden spoon to click to the venting now and release all the pressure. Don't be afraid. Woo! Hey girl. It smells really good and may the force be with me because I'm about to open this puppy up. All right. Oh yes, nice and steamy. And then I wanna bring up some of these chickpeas so you can see them. There they are, supposedly perfectly cooked. All right. Here are my delicious chickpeas. I will say after I cooked these for about five minutes, I tasted them and they were so not done in any way, shape or form. So I popped the top back on and cooked them for an additional four minutes. I've been snacking on them. Some are super creamy and some are done, but to that, you know, that, that bite, that al dente, I like them all to be super creamy. So I just need to play with the cooking times a little bit. That is not a reflection on R2-D2 here. I love this, I will buy this again and again. I just need to get a little bit more familiar with my recipes and how they cook in the Instapot, and I am willing to do that. So if you love Star Wars as much as I do, you've gotta check out my Star Wars playlist here on YouTube. Every Christmas, I make a Star Wars themed Christmas cookie. I've got everything on there from dark chocolate Darth Vader cookies to my most recent C3PO lemon gingers. They are delicious and so much fun to make, so please check that list out. With all that said, from me and the newest addition to my kitchen, may the force be with you and your chickpeas and your Instapot. Okay, I got it. Can you believe it? They are popping, and I think that's because they're kind of expanding out of their skins from being soaked. It's kind of cool to listen to it. It's like popcorn, but no oil, and it's not corn. It's chickpeas.